Harris and Minnesota Governor Tim Walz will debut as a 2024 Democratic ticket at a Philadelphia rally. Vice President Kamala Harris picked Minnesota Governor Tim Walz to be her running mate on Tuesday, turning to an affable longtime politician who Democrats hope can keep newfound party unity alive in a campaign barreling toward Election Day. Harris said in a post on social media that Walls has delivered for working families as a governor, coach, teacher, and veteran. Walls called it the honor of a lifetime to be Harris's vice presidential pick. The two will appear together in Philadelphia at an evening rally. In choosing the 60-year-old Walls, Harris is elevating a Midwestern governor, military veteran, and union supporter who helped enact an ambitious democratic agenda for his state, including sweeping protections for abortion rights and generous aid to families. It was her biggest decision yet as the Democratic nominee, and she went with a broadly palatable choice, someone who deflects dark and foreboding rhetoric from Republicans with a lighter touch, a strategy that the campaign has been increasingly turning to since Harris took over the top spot. Walls is joining Harris on the ticket during one of the most turbulent periods in modern American politics. Republicans have rallied around former President Donald Trump after he was targeted in an attempted assassination in July. Just days later, President Joe Biden ended his re-election campaign, forcing Harris to scramble to unify Democrats and decide on a running mate over a breakneck two-week stretch. Harris hopes Walls will help her shore up her campaign's standing across the upper Midwest, a critical region in presidential politics that often serves as a buffer for Democrats seeking the White House. The party remains haunted by Trump's wins in Michigan and Wisconsin in 2016. Trump lost those states in 2020, but has zeroed in on them as he aims to return to the presidency this year and is expanding his focus to Minnesota. Walls is far from a household name. An ABC News Ipsos survey conducted before he was selected, but after vetting began, showed that nearly 9 in 10 U.S. adults did not know enough to have an opinion about him. Harris, the first black woman and person of South Asian descent to lead a major party ticket, initially considered nearly a dozen candidates before zeroing in on a handful of serious contenders. Trump has focused much of his campaign on appealing to men, emphasizing a need for strength in national leadership and even featuring the wrestler Hulk Hogan on the final night of the Republican National Convention. Harris's finalists, all white men, marked an acknowledgement of the Democrats' need to at least try to win over some of that demographic. She personally interviewed three finalists, Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro, Arizona Senator Mark Kelly, and Walls. Harris wanted someone with executive experience who could be a governing partner and Walls also offered appeal to the widest swath of the diverse coalition. His selection drew praise from lawmakers as ideologically diverse as progressive leader, Repetitor Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, DNY, and independent Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia, a moderate who left the Democratic Party earlier this year. A team of lawyers and political operatives led by former Attorney General Eric Holder poured over documents and conducted interviews with potential selections. Harris mulled the decision over on Monday with top aides and finalized it Tuesday morning, according to three people familiar with Harris's decision who spoke on condition of anonymity to describe private deliberations. Shapiro, an ambitious politician in his own right, struggled with the idea of being number two at the White House and said he felt he had more to do in Pennsylvania, according to one of the people familiar with Harris's decision. There was also public pushback to Shapiro for his stance on Israel from Arab American groups and younger voters angry over the administration's response to the Israel-Hamas war. The other contenders threw their support behind the ticket Tuesday, as did Biden, who said the pair was a powerful voice for working people and America's great middle class. Walds has made a name for himself in recent weeks by coining one of Democrats' buzziest campaign bits to date, calling Trump and Vance just weird. A label that the Democratic Governors Association, of which Walls is chairman, amplified in a post on X and Democrats more broadly have echoed. During a fundraiser for Harris on Monday in Minneapolis, Walls said, it wasn't a slur to call these guys weird. It was an observation. Harris, second gentleman Doug Emhoff and Walls are set to appear together for an evening rally in Philadelphia.
They will spend the next five days touring critical battleground states, visiting Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and Detroit on Wednesday, and Phoenix and Las Vegas later in the week. Vance, for his part, planned stops in some of the same cities. He said Tuesday that he called Walls earlier in the day and left a voice message. Putting Walls on the ticket could help Democrats hold Minnesota's 10 electoral votes and bolster the party more broadly in the Midwest. No Republican has won a statewide race in Minnesota since Tim Pawlenty was re-elected governor in 2006, but GOP candidates for attorney general and state auditor came close in 2022. Trump finished just 1.5 percentage points behind Democrat Hillary Clinton in the state in 2016. While Biden carried Minnesota by more than seven points in 2020, Trump has taken to falsely claiming that he won the state last time and can do it again. The Trump campaign immediately tried to tag Walls as a far-left liberal. It's no surprise that San Francisco liberal Kamala Harris wants West Coast wannabe Tim Walls as her running mate. Walls has spent his governorship trying to reshape Minnesota in the image of the Golden State, said Caroline Levitt, Trump's campaign press secretary. Walls is obsessed with spreading California's dangerously liberal agenda far and wide. Walls, who grew up in the small town of West Point, Nebraska, was a social studies teacher, football coach, and union member at Mankato West High School in Minnesota before he got into politics. He won the first of six terms in Congress in 2006 from a mostly rural southern Minnesota district and used the office to champion veterans' issues. Walls served 24 years in the Army National Guard, rising to command Sergeant Major, one of the highest enlisted ranks in the military. He ran for governor in 2018 on the theme of One Minnesota and won by more than 11 points. David Ivory, a 46-year-old St. Paul resident, hopped on his bike with his kids Tuesday after finding out Walls was the choice, riding over to his residence to deliver their congratulations. He's just down to earth. He gets it. He can talk to anybody, Ivory said. He doesn't seem like he's above anybody. Minnesota Sen. Amy Klobuchar says Walls is someone who is just unendingly optimistic and joyous, and that is very, very important right now in our politics. As governor, Walls had to find ways to work in his first term with a legislature that was split between a Democratic-controlled House and a Republican-led Senate. Minnesota has a history of divided government, though, and the arrangement was surprisingly productive in his first year. Walls easily won re-election in 2022, and Democrats also kept control of the House and flipped the Senate to win full control of both chambers and the governor's office for the first time in eight years. A big reason was the Dobbs decision from the conservative majority Supreme Court that held that the Constitution doesn't include a right to abortion. Walls and other Democrats went into the 2023 legislative session with an ambitious agenda and a whopping $17.6 billion budget surplus to help fund it. Their proudest accomplishments included sweeping protections for abortion rights that included the elimination of nearly all restrictions Republicans had enacted in prior years, including a 24-hour waiting period and parental consent requirements. They also enacted new protections for trans rights, making the state a refuge for families coming from out of state for treatment for trans children. Republicans complained that Walls and his fellow Democrats squandered a surplus that would have been better spent on permanent tax relief for everyone. And they faulted the governor and his administration for lax oversight of pandemic programs that cost taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars. Republicans still criticize Walls for his response to the sometimes violent unrest that followed the murder of George Floyd by a Minneapolis police officer in 2020, which included the torching of a police station.